How's it going? Episode three of the Not So Epic Rant podcast. We're back. Took a couple days longer than the last two, but oh well. You know what? Uh, first off, I want to apologize to everyone that listened to episode two. Um, honestly, I wasn't in a good mood. I probably shouldn't have did that, or I should have waited a day later. But you know what? Um, I'm really not as mad. As I sounded looking back on things now that it's uh, some time has passed we still got to watch the Patriots play another Super Bowl and another time we got to root against them and you know it's getting a little annoying but oh well they made it to the play the Super Bowl um, good for them but really you know I'm just happy I got to see three extra weeks of Steeler football I got to see them win nine games in a row or ten whatever it ended up being um, and next year's looking really promising. They made it to the divisional last year. They made it to the conference this year. So next year we got to do it. Martavis Bryant's back. Um, I don't give a shit what Ben's saying. He's playing. You heard it here. You heard it here. Ben is playing next year. Um, $18.3 million on the table waiting for him. He's playing. He's got Martavis Bryant. He's going to have presumably healthy Le'Veon Bell, hopefully suspension-free Le'Veon Bell. Who knows what kind of trouble Antonio Brown got himself in with Facebook, but uh, I, I, if anything, he'll miss a game. I can't see it being more than that. Um, hopefully it'll just be a monetary fine. Um, monetary. Hopefully he'll just get fined and won't actually get suspended. Uh, but who knows? We'll see. I'm excited. Defense is going to be a little older. I don't know what they're going to do in the draft. Probably get a tight end. Um Maybe another cornerback. Probably they'll. I assume they'll stay on the defensive side with the draft as they normally do. Um, offensive line's great. Um, probably could use another tight end. We'll see though. I don't know what the deal with the Darius Green is. Um, if Jesse James is going to work out. Like I said last week, he had some consistency problems this year. Um, and you know who knows what they're going to do with Grimble and uh, what's the other dude's name? Frank Johnson. So. Which I like both of them. I like both. Um, I know R Roosevelt Nix is back, so uh, we'll have a fullback for another year. Um, but Johnson can also play the fullback position as well. He's played both fullback and tight end. So, um, But I think that's enough sports for now. We'll see. Maybe I'll come back to it later. But um, I know I'm, I'm excited for next year. And it's going to be a long off season, but it could have been longer if I didn't get those extra three weeks. So I'm happy. That being said, um, I don't. I'm not going to make any playoff or uh, any Super Bowl predict predictions. Like I said last week, I don't make uh, predictions really. Um, obviously, I'm rooting for the Falcons. Falcons have the better offense. Patriots have the better defense. But you know that's that's how sports work. So we'll see. Um, I think the Falcons can do it. I know the Patriots can do it. That's the problem. The Patriots have been here before. They have four Super Bowl wins. Uh, the Falcons have zero. The Falcons played one Super Bowl, right, against the Packers, I want to say. Um, but, oh well. We'll see what happens. I'm not, can't say I'm excited for the Super Bowl, but um, I'm usually not superly excited unless the Patriots or unless the Steelers are playing. Um, and maybe if I ever get to see my other two teams, the Bills or the Rams, playing a Super Bowl. But uh, I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, given the state of those two teams, I know the Bills have a new head coach. I uh, hope they keep Tyrod Taylor. I really do. I think he's a great quarterback. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, the Rams, I'm not even going to entertain the idea of them turning anything around in the near future. Um, especially when they just moved to L.A. That's hard to, you know, uproot a, a, a team and move to cities and then expect them to be good. So, oh, well, we'll see what happens. That's enough sports, though. Don't you think? Or do you want more sports? I don't know what you guys want, to, want me to talk about. Um, I've gotten some feedback back, some feedback about the show, but not really uh, anything like what, what people like hearing me talk about, what people don't want to hear me talk about. Grant... Granted, there it is again. Granted, I've only done two episodes so far, this being my third. We'll see, though. Um, if you have any topics you want me to talk about, let me know. I'll bullshit. If I don't care about the topics, um, maybe I'll, I'll look into them some more. 
uh, or maybe it's something you know I like. So just let me know. Give me some feedback. I want to hear it. Tell me I suck. Tell me I'm amazing. Or tell me I'm in between, which that's what I'm assuming I'll hear. Um, you know, I like sports. I like music. Those are my two favorite things. Um, music more than sports, for the most part. Well, here, I'm not a... Uh, I've, the way I've explained it to people is I'm a musician. Um, I'm not a... I'm not generally a fan of music, whereas I am a fan of sports. Here's how I'll explain this. And even that, um, yeah, I'm difficult, all right? I'll admit it. I like what I like, but who the hell doesn't? I could be picky. Who isn't picky? You know? I'm not perfect. Neither are you. That's why you're listening to me. Or that's not why you're listening to me. I don't know why you're listening to me. Anyway... I like the, I'm a musician, I like to make music, I like to play music, and I like to listen to music, but I'm not a general fan of music. That being said, you know, there's people that say, hey, there's no such thing as bad, bad music, music is music. I'm not that type of person. Um, I'd rather listen to nothing than music I don't like, especially if I, it's like, it's, it's one thing if I could tell it's music that, you know, someone has someone that you know that the artist themselves is passionate about but when i'm listening to this computer generated industry driven you know just garbage garbage bullshit music some three different people wrote it um it was all on a computer auto tune that shit top 40 hits when i when i listen to that me being a musician me knowing what it's like to sit down and write music uh, knowing what it's like to play music live for people, when I hear that shit, it's so disingenuous. It's so fake. It's actually like it, it actually pains me to listen to it, knowing that those people, that there's people out there that listen to that that can't see through the bullshit. You know, can't see through the mainstream bullshit. They think that that is real music. Which I guess, in a sense, it's real music. I mean, it's singing and there's, there's instruments, air quotes, instruments, and it has melody and a beat and a rhythm, I guess. In, a, in, in essence, it is music, but where is the heart? Where's the soul behind some of this shit? And I, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, I mean, without just naming artists, but, I mean, you, you all know who, who these people and these artists are. You know who I'm talking about. As soon as I mentioned it, you, you, a couple of names popped in your head. So uh, there's no real need for me to elaborate on who the hell I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. Just turn on Top 40 Hits. There you go. Listen to that shit. Listen to the lyrics. Listen to the, the repetition. Listen to how much the, all, all that shit just sounds the same. Listen to you, you know, a certain artist will have their first huge hit. You never heard of them before, but all of a sudden, you know, they're number one. They're, it's the song of the summer. You're going to hear that shit. Wait for their next big hit, if they make it that far. Wait for their next big hit. It sounds exactly the same. Both songs are probably three and a half minutes long. They both have the same bullshit intro, the same verse, the same chorus. Oh, then the same bridge where it's just the chorus lyrics only. They, they you know, put just use a piano instead of having the drums and everything. You know, that shit. Or some other bullshit bridge. Listen to it. Actually sit down and analyze this shit. And tell me, tell me that that's real. Tell me that they sat down and they wrote that shit. And, the, you know, that's how they feel. You know? But most of the time... When outside of, you know, songs that are written about relationships and relationship drama, you know, it's songs about partying and money and all that shit. And I understand that this is music made for a party setting. Um, it's not music made to expand anyone's consciousness or expand anyone's um, scope of reality or to educate people or to move people. It's just made to fill a gap so that when you walk into someone's house for a party, it's not silent. 
there's something a little louder than all these dumb conversations people are having about their boring ass lives. Not saying I live this exciting, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't live exactly live life on the edge, but you know what I mean. That's what it's for. Am I right? Am I wrong? You know what it's for. It's just so that when you walk into someone's house, there's some, just there's something there. And the sad thing is, they make money off of it. They make a living off of it. They make more than a living. They make an excess off of this spoon-fed garbage that just getting stuffed down your throat. You can't watch a commercial without hearing it. You can't watch a football game without hearing it because they got to put it on in the freaking halftime show of the Super Bowl or the playoffs or the segues because there's 13 commercials every two minutes. So before the commercial, you got to hear this bullshit music. Every once in a while, they'll throw in something good, but no, not all the time. Then you'll hear it during the commercials, you hear it at halftime, you hear it before the game, after the game, you hear it in the pregame, the postgame. You know, it's in sports, it's in movies. They throw that shit in movies because they, they, they uh, I understand that there's millions of dollars on the line and the, you know, the movie has to be a success, so why don't they throw this garbage mainstream bullshit music in that everyone likes because apparently everyone likes it, even though that's not true because I don't like it and I know people that don't like it. I know more people that do, but that's beside the point. It's bullshit, and it's everywhere, and it's it's almost like a sickness. We can't get away from this, this monotonous, this this. It's it's like, it's like um, how do I want to explain it? It's like so watered down. It's so simple. It's so easy. Uh, this, these stars, just this, these music stars just come up overnight. It's people you've never heard. You look at the billboard charts, who are these people? And even the ones you've heard of, you can't name five songs unless, you, unless you're actually a fan. Unless you're actually a fan, you can't. And the sh one time, uh, I, was, I was listening to the radio, not, not purposefully. Like, I was in the car, I can't remember where I was, what I was doing, probably working, but... Um, I wasn't in control of the radio, obviously, and one of these stupid pop stations is, is on. And it's, I'm going to say this might be two years ago, probably 2014, and it's like Flashback Friday or Throwback Thursday or something. You know what? They, they It was like year, hits from year 2009. Are you kidding me? Five years and we're already doing, oh, do you remember in 2009 these were the hits? And half of the people weren't even stars anymore. And that was their one-hit wonder. So five years in the pop world is old. You do a flashback Friday on Sirius XM Liquid Metal, you're listening to uh, Master of the Puppets. Or no, you know, you're listening to Judas Priest, um, something from the early 80s or late 70s. I'm not super familiar. I'm not a big Judas Priest fan. But uh, you're listening to... Power Slave by Iron Maiden. I don't know what year that came out, but I know it was in 2009. You're listening to Paranoid by Black Sabbath. You're listening to Ace of Spades by Motorhead. You know, that's flashback. That's back in the day. Not this bullshit. You know why they can't do it? Because they didn't have, they weren't using computers to make mu music back in 1970. Huh? They, they didn't do that shit. That's why you can't have Flashback Friday in the 70s for pop because pop means popular. That's what it is. So whatever's the most popular bullshit that they're feeding you at the time, that's the, what the genre consists of. You know, one month it's EDM, the next month it's freaking hipsters with these, uh, we work on a train costumes, and then it's freaking, oh, maybe for a week it'll be reggae, and then it'll be hip hop, and what the hell is that? You, you don't even know what this shit is. But, but they all still ended up sounding the same somehow because it's all this regurgitated bullshit computer garbage. I'm really ranting today. I'm fired. I didn't even mean to talk about this. What caught me on this subject? I don't know. But I'm fired up now. I'm fired up. And, I, I you know, I can't stand to listen to this shit. And I don't understand how everyone does. But I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't blame you for it. I, I, I just know that it's, 
it's uh, it's mainstream and it's shoved down your throat. You can't get away from it unless you try. Um, but but you know, me being a musician, me striving to write my own stuff and get my stuff out there. I when I hear this this computer generated garbage, it's really disheartening. You know, it, it hurts to listen to it, knowing that. It took them four minutes to throw this together, and they made millions of dollars off of it. But I spent a year writing a song um, that actually, you know, there's real emotion in it. You can hear the different the intricacies in the in the guitar work, and uh, yeah, it's it's drum programming. But that's just because I don't know how to play drums. If I knew how to play drums adequately, I wouldn't do that. But I, I I've tried. I've I'm, I've not spent a lot of time learning how to play drums but I've sat down behind a kit before and it wasn't as natural as picking up the guitar was because I actually learned that rather quickly um, but I know what it's like to actually write music and how hard it is and then I put out a song and no one gives a shit yeah I know it's not the it's not um, the best stuff out there but how how I how Many people would rather just listen to the same old shit. Um, it doesn't matter if it came out t yesterday. It sounds like the same shit that was on Flashback Friday from 2009. You know? That's the truth. I don't even know who are the the top, you know, trending artists right now. Like on iTunes. Let's take a look on iTunes. Um, new music. The first one, Brantley Gilbert. Oh, Jesus. Oh my god. Here's a douche for you. Um, he looks exactly like Phil Labonte from All That Remains. He tries to act hard and tough. Look at you, Brantley Gilbert. The devil don't sleep. You listen to his music, it's the gayest, softest, bullshit, uh, modern country. That might be the worst shit out there, I don't know. It's just the whole tough country cowboy boots and cowboy hat thing and then they're singing about drinking on a beach and oh my god okay culture never heard of it probably rap let's look culture Migos is the name yeah hip hop Migos is the name of the album it's got four stars um let's listen to culture featuring DJ Cal oh wait, is Migos the artist? I don't know. Migos, wow. That shows you how much I don't know. Migos is the artist. Migos? Migos? And Culture is the name of the, the album. Let's listen to Culture by... Or featuring DJ... Oh my god. Listen to that. Jesus. All right. Kalani, sweet, sexy, savage. Jesus Christ! This looks like okay. So she's like Indian, like not native, like from the country India. So that's fine. But um, she's got short hair. Let's see. Kalani Parrish reached the release of her debut album, The Hard Way. Dudes paid in a teen pop band and on America's Top Got Talent. Various personal struggles. What what personal struggles do you have? Oh, Jesus. But it's helped sharpen her silky R&B and bewitching edge. Oh, she looks edgy to me. She's got a neck tattoo and a face tattoo. That's great. She must be edgy. Oh, Jesus. This summer jam. Radio-friendly summer jams. Oh, my. Doesn't that just sound great? She's got a song in, in Suicide, Squ Suicide Squad called Gangsta with an A. Oh, my God. She's like 19. She's from a country with 2 billion people. She's a gangsta. Crazy, spelled C-R-Z-Y. Let's listen to how crazy this is. <laughs> oh, how crazy do you go? Do you? Oh, my. That's R&B? That sounded exactly like the last stuff that was... Uh, Categorized as hip hop. Um, I don't hear rhythm or blues in that. Crazy. Do you go? Uh, 
Do you go as crazy as, let me think here. Um, who's pretty crazy? Dillinger Escape Plan crazy? I doubt it. Go watch the live video, Dillinger Escape Plan. And then tell me who's more crazy. Kalani, Kel, I don't know how to say it. Kalani or, uh, or Dillinger Escape Plan. Um, how was your debut album on the front page of iTunes? What's up with that? How do, how do I do that? When I put out my debut album, how do I get it on the front page of iTunes? And then there's Brian Johnson. Is this like ACDC Brian Johnson? Brian Johnson and Jen Johnson, Christian and Gospel. That's on the front page. Here's Gravity by Jen Johnson. The name of the song was the second word she said. Uh, that's really, uh, what's the word? That's really original. Okay, then we got Chris Tile or Chris Thile and Brad Nelda. I can't even pronounce these names. Oh, it's Jazz. Jazz is on the front of iTunes. What's up with that? Holy shit. It has, okay, here's another thing. Let's look at the, let's look at the reviews. This has 22 reviews and it's on the front page of iTunes. Let's go back to Kalhani. Kalhani is 899, so that's, that's telling you what's actually getting listened to. Then we got Train. There's, the, oh, they're great. They're a great one hit wonder. Three stars out of 274 reviews. I'm not gonna, not even gonna put any of that. Now that's what I call Music 61. It has Bruno Mars, Maroon 5, Alicia Cara, never heard of her. Ariana Grande, DJ Snake, never heard of her. The Weeknd, Ray Remond, never heard of her. Dram, D-A-R-M, never heard of her. Zay Hilferger and Zay, I can't read the rest of it. Never heard of her. Fifth Harmony, Har Har Fifth Harmony, never heard of her. John Bellion, never heard of him. Martin Garrix, Hey Violet, Shawn Mendes, Niall Hor, never heard of any of these people. Nash, Citizen, what the, f what is this bullshit? Now that's what I call music. Who pays for that? Who, what record company puts this shit out? Let's look at some of the reviews for now that's what I call music. Okay, we got, here's a four star review by Pamela Moore with all, it's, with all the hits we've now had, we've, we've had since now 60. I was looking forward to this installment of the Now series. Oh, go to hell, you stupid bitch. Yeah, uh, this is a one star review. Oh, really is the head title. By Jonah Vark. Yeah, compile a list of some of the worst songs that have ever hit the airwaves. Great way to make money off mindless music buyers who exclusively listen to the hits. I agree. Trash. Now, this is what I call Music Died After Volume 3. Um, number 61, It's Time to Stop. Now, now this, this Now 61 is great by KB Cheetah. Great album, and I love all the music on for you. Great for you. I'm glad you're happy. Very good. Two exclamation points by X-C-E-R-K-R-M-A. Great. Exceptional track listing. Really excited about this one. Pretty much all the big hits. Okay, not Closer. They don't like the song Closer, whoever that's by. Um, with some up-and-coming ones like Hey Violet and Super WN songs. Whatever Super WN songs are. Nice work here. Wow. So uh, we got people saying it's it's either one star reviews or five star reviews. There's a two star dissatisfied and disappointed. What are you expecting? A A R Cothran dissatisfied and disappointed. I honestly thought there there were there were not there were there were going to some songs that I was gonna have to stop and go. I need this. Need is in all caps. Yeah, I don't need any of the songs on this album, the ones I wanted, I already owned them, so I'm dissatisfied and disappointed. Frowny face emoji. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. If that's how you find your new music, now that's what I call music, you're an asshole. Sorry, but it's true. Um, what else is up here in the new music thing on iTunes? We got Pure Comedy by Father John Misty. Never heard of him. Laura Alania, what is this? Ty Seagull, Twisted. Holy shit, there's a metal album on here. Creator. I'm not a big Creator fan, but holy shit. Creator's got a new album released on January 27th, 2017, called Gods of Violence, and it's up here. 
That's funny. Um, me, obviously, being from the metal world, um, people that listen to shit like Creator, like uh, old school thrash and old school metal, um, a lot of them think that there's there's no good, like metal's dead and there's no good music um, being made by metal bands. There are. You just got to find the shit. Um, and you got to... You gotta not be afraid to step out of your your lane and find something some new shit within the genre because let's be honest, outside of the bands from the 70s and 80s that um, are still together, not many bands since them have made music that sounds like that for a few reasons. Um, evolution of music, you know, that's not what a lot of people listen to. Um, they hear, um, or they weren't inspired by it. You know, bands that are just starting now, like... People like myself, people that are writing music now, didn't grow up listening to music from the 70s and 80s. Um, doesn't mean you can't find it and be inspired by it, but chances of them, you know, uh, I want to write music that sounds exactly like Judas Priest. Um, I want to write music that sounds like Motley Crue. You know, that that's not what people are listening to, so you're really, you're really, um, really, uh, what do I want to put the word... How do I want to put this? Like, okay, so if I write prog metal, there are people today that listen to prog metal, any kind of prog metal. But people that listen to Motley Crue only listen to Motley Crue and only listen to Guns N' Roses. They don't want to find new bands that sound like that. Outside of, like, Steel Panther, who the hell comes up making, you know, hair metal nowadays? No one, because it's dead. Um, so you can't expect people to... Um, you can't say that metal is dead whenever you have bands like like Code Orange. All right, they're they're uh, they're a crossover between hardcore and metal, but listen to Code Orange, and I'm not the hugest fan of them. Um, they have a brand new album out called Forever, some shit like that. Forever, um, and I gave it a listen, and yeah, there's a song on there obviously that they're pushing. You know, not not for radio because Code Orange is never going to be on radio. They have a softer track on it, but that's a track that's going to get young people and people that don't listen to that shit into their band. And I, I'm not totally opposed to it because it's also it's not a bad song. Like uh, Mastodon has a couple songs like that, and I actually like them. Like um, the Mother Load and um, Curl the Burl, shit like that. Those are the songs, you know, people hear them and they're like, oh, Mastodon, I like the song. And then um, they're going to find, then they'll find Leviathan and they're like, holy shit, blood and thunder. What the hell am I doing listening to all this three days grace garbage when I could be listening to Leviathan, blood and thunder, that shit. So that's how, that's how people find good music. And um, you just got to be willing to do that with younger bands like Code Orange, you know. Um, I think that song's called Bleeding in the Burr. Maybe I'll start throwing music at the end of the at the end of the show. Um, I'll probably pick a song. Like maybe I can pick a song or two. But um, yeah, check out check out Code Orange. There's good shit out there. You just gotta find it. Um, you can't be afraid to to do a little digging. Um, and if you if you listen to Judas Priest and that's your favorite shit, chances are you finding more music that sounds like Judas Priest. Um, pretty slim to none. Not gonna happen. So. Uh, you can't be afraid to step out of your box a little bit. And this has come from me. I, you, you can't imagine the shit people say to me. I'm closed-minded. Um, that's You can call me whenever you want to call me. Here's what I do. I listen to something, and if I don't like it, I don't like it, and I don't listen to it ever again. It just happens to be 99% of pop music and rap and all that shit and country. That doesn't mean I'm closed-minded. I try, I'll, I'll listen to this shit. Send me something. Send me something. Don't send me Taylor Swift. I'm not gonna like it. Not, Taylor Swift is never gonna put out a song that that that's for me. She doesn't write music for me. She writes music for girls and people going through breakups and people that go th go to parties and bullshit like that. Just like uh, just like um, you know, who do I think? Winds of Plague doesn't write music for people going through breakup. Well, I guess they. I guess you can, but you know what I mean. They don't write music for the same people that Taylor Swift writes music for. So you can't, you can't look at it that way. For me, music is something more than just background noise. It's more than uh, there to fill a gap. For me, music is my passion and something I enjoy spending my time creating and listening to and feeling. Above all, um, it helps me when I'm angry and it helps me when I'm disappointed or sad or, you know, it's also there for when I'm 
when I have a good time and I'm in a good mood, um, it can help that as well. So that's why I'm really turned off with most of the mainstream and modern stuff because it just feels generic. It feels unreal to me. Uh, I don't get anything out of it. Like I said earlier, I understand that a lot of it is not written for people like myself, but that being said, um, it is still music, and that's part of the reason why I say I'm not a general lover of music. I just kind of like the stuff that I like, and I really like the stuff that I like, and I'm really passionate about it, and um, I enjoy creating it. Um, so, yeah, that's why the, the, the modern stuff just really doesn't do it for me. You know, speaking of modern stuff, I guess, this is a, a segue. Um, so like, I can't remember, a week ago now? A little over a week ago. Whenever, a little right after I put up the last episode, so almost two weeks ago. Um, I remember I was looking, uh, I was in the settings on my phone under like usage and there's a part where it tells you like what apps you use and for how long and I can't remember if it was in a if it was a day I think it was daily or yeah um it said like I used Facebook for three hours a day or some some shit like that or maybe it's three hours a week I don't know I can't remember but I just remember seeing three hours I was like holy shit three hours of my time I think it was daily spent looking at that um, when I could definitely use that three hours in a better way. So I went ahead and I just deleted the the Facebook app. And uh, you know what? Actually, it was right before I posted the episode. That's right. I deleted it right before I posted the episode because I had to go on my computer to post the episode um, and then share it on, on Facebook. So I use it on my... I did that on my computer browser. So yeah, over over almost two weeks ago, I deleted... My Facebook app, I didn't delete the account, the account's still there because I got to keep up with the uh, the uh, the Facebook page, um, and I have other, like, band pages on there as well, but, uh, yeah, it's it's been nice, really, I don't miss it, um, every once in a while, I don't even know, I don't even think about it every once in a while, it's just not, it's not become a part of my life, I'm sure someday I'll go on it uh, and check, but I just... Don't miss that time spent just looking at nonsense. Every once in a while you see something cool, like uh, especially if you follow like pages like, you know, sports pages and band pages and shit like that. But really, I mean, you're going to find there's there's not much information on there that I'm going to miss out on. You know, I'm going to find out. I'm still going to get my information out there. There's other ways of getting it. So um, I, I suggest... I, I suggest people tr give it a try. Just try it out. Just delete the Facebook app. You don't need to delete your page or anything. Just delete the app on your phone. And see. And then if you really want to look on it, just wait until you get to a computer. You know, unless you work behind a computer and you have free time, then you're, you know, you're not really not getting away from it. But me, um, I haven't even pulled up the Facebook browser since I put up that episode. So um, that's pretty cool. And I can't say that I miss it. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll download it again someday. But for now, I'm really enjoying not going on there. And I haven't used um, my other social medias as much. Like, I haven't even looked at them that much either. So, it's nice. Um, yeah, like, I, was, I would definitely suggest just giving it a try. Even if it's one day. Just try it without one day. Just delete the app and don't go on a browser. Just see what it's like and you'll actually, you'll probably enjoy it. Um, because I, I don't feel like I need that to connect with people socially. Like if if you know me and you want to, you want me to be a part of your life or I'm a part of your, or you're a part of my life, like you don't need my Facebook or you don't need to get in touch with, with me through Facebook, you know. Um, so... If you need to, if you want to know something about me, you want to know what I'm up to, just ask. I'll tell you. You don't need to be friends with me on Facebook to find out what I'm up to. So uh, I think it's nice, and you should try it. I really wish I would have done that 
a couple weeks ago or a, a couple months ago in the height of all the political uh, Facebook bull or yeah, the political election bullshit um, because reading some of that nonsense that people post on there, um, you know, I like the people with the red ties versus I like the people with the blue ties and I'm right and you're wrong and Jesus, you can, you'll lose your mind reading that shit. I really wish I would have thought about doing that then. Um, I really didn't go on it that much around that time because I knew what I was going to read. Uh, nothing but I'm right, you're wrong from both sides, you know. Um, but I, I'm, I'm glad that that's over for the most part. I mean, there's still always going to be people talking about their political opinions, um, something I don't do often. So you keep, you're never going to completely avoid it because uh, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to come up in conversation in person as well. So it's nothing you can completely avoid. But, uh, yeah, I, I regret not doing that months ago. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how long I hold out. And uh, it's, it definitely feels nice not wasting my time. Um, I feel like I've been a little more productive. I still need to work on my productivity. Uh, I know I talked about that in, my, in the first episode, uh, if you didn't listen to that. Um, so that's something I'm still working on and just all around being a better human being on a freaking rock flying through space at millions of miles per hour. Isn't that crazy? Sometimes you just got to stop and think about that and, you know, go outside and look up at the stars and think, Holy shit, you're on a rock flying through space. I, I don't even how fast does how fast is the earth moving? I don't know. I probably should. And there's nine other well eight other rocks in your general vicinity all revolving around um this humongous ball of fire that would kill you before you even got close to it, you know? because uh, it's that hot. How close do you need to be to the sun before it, it would kill you? I don't know. Um, it's definitely not that close. Pretty far away. So, I mean, you can get sunburn. Think about that. You can get sunburn on Earth. Holy shit. That's crazy. And think about how much closer the moon is than the sun and which one looks bigger. So that shows you how big the the sun is, because you know we're. I, I mean, I don't I, I don't really know the measurements, but I know for a fact we're closer to the moon because apparently we've been there before. Um, I, I still don't know what side of that idea or what side of that conspiracy I'm on, whether the fact that we've been to the moon or whether we haven't. Um, still a little skeptical about that, but I've always leaned towards the we have side than we haven't. So. But just think about that. So we're we're definitely closer to the moon than we are to the sun, but the sun looks like five times bigger than the moon, and it can burn your skin. So holy shit, how big is the freaking sun? Because really, we don't have a... I mean, I know... Um, not space exploration, but I know they're pretty pretty damn accurate today with their um, with their calculations and shit like that, but... We don't exactly know how big the sun is, and I, I would imagine it's not something that you can measure because it's energy. It's a ball of energy, pretty much, and I don't think you can actually like accurately measure its exact dimensions, but we know it's pretty freaking huge, um, and like I said, it looks like it's five times bigger than the moon, and the moon's like 12 feet away compared to the sun, so yeah. Just when you think uh, humans are the most important thing of all time, just think about that. You're on a rock flying through space. And I think that's a perfect way to wrap up episode three of the Not So Epic Rant podcast. How epic was that, right? I'm probably going to go with what I was thinking earlier and drop two songs um, or so. And so this might not be the last time you're hearing me because if I go ahead and do that, I'll see what songs they are. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully you enjoy this episode and the others. Check it out on SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. They should be up. Well, right now it's the night time of 
the 2nd, February 2nd. So you'll probably be listening to this on the 3rd or the 4th of February 2017. Signing off, flying through space. Good night, good luck, whatever bullshit you want me to say. Wrapping this up. Bye-bye. All right, so I finally figured out what two songs I want you guys to listen to at the end of this. Uh, but first, listen here, bitches. Uh, you can't, the, the songs won't be on the YouTube versions. They will only be on SoundCloud and iTunes. So if you really want to hear the songs, check them out on SoundCloud and iTunes. Uh, due to copyright issues, I can't put the songs on YouTube. Uh, so if, if you don't care about the music, stick with the YouTube. But if you do, check it out on SoundCloud and iTunes. Um, I swear I'm not doing that because I need the views. I don't give a shit what, which, uh, gets the most views. So, um, the music will only be on SoundCloud and iTunes. Uh, so first, Code Orange with their song Bleeding in the Blur. I think I did mention this song in the episode. Uh, it's not the best song on Forever. However, it's the most accessible. So I think a couple people out there will dig it. After that, it's a band I heard because, I heard of because they went on tour with Tool, my favorite band. Um, that is Three Teeth. They're an industrial metal band. Um, they sound like or similar to Rammstein, some Rob Zombie, and Nine Inch Nails. Uh, so you can you can dance and you can headbang and you can scream along to it. So do whatever you want. Like it or don't, let me know or don't. Uh, yep, we'll see you on the other side, baby.